Hello and welcome to this special video that I have for you today uh, where we are going to be sharing with you all a members podcast uh, for free to the public. It has literally just ended. Uh, so the content is fresh from today and uh, I'm going to upload this onto YouTube and you'll be watching it now, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, I hope that you really enjoy. Um, you know, this is obviously the podcast feature which might be soon having the video aspect of it come as well. So that's to stay tuned for. Um, basically, this is, uh, right now, it is the number one most loved bit of content that we're producing. People absolutely love it. They get their questions answered. It starts off with, I'm going to cut this out because it's, from, you know, that's members content. But it starts off with a run through of Bitcoin, the actual trade arm, you know, what I'm in right now, what we're looking for, you know, into the shorter term and you know the price action as it's happening right now this is done from trading assistant every day i took over today to give him a bit of a you know a bit of a break and you know tomorrow be about of trading assistant and this is yeah right now absolutely loved it is the podcast feature within discord every single day running you through the bitcoin price action taking your questions answering the questions and uh yeah basically just a brilliant way to see people improve and you know get a bit of a bit of a knowledge increase and look at bitcoin simultaneously people want to know what's happening live in the time and you know what better way to do it than when there's a move happening so yeah here we go the clip probably is about i don't know um 30 minutes ish they normally last for about an hour a day and um yeah this is a new feature within chart champions if you like what you see you can you know, sign up at chartchampions.com. I uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you ever so much and have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you and good bye. Enjoy. Like we, but over the past 24 hours, this has been really, really, really nice. Actually, over the past like 48, three days, you know, it's been pretty nice price action. Like the levels have actually been respected absolutely perfectly. Like the rejection on the fourth of the CC. Coming back down to the channel low, getting a retest at the point of control. You know, this is the exact highs and lows, the last four exact highs and lows. Really well, you know, perfectly respected. And then you've actually had quite a lot of sculpt trades within this. So, you know, I think you could, you know, it's open back up to sculpt traders at the moment. I don't actually think it's choppy, although it might look choppy to the untrained eye. It's actually really, really, really technical. So, yeah, I wouldn't class this as choppy price action. I'd just call it as um, nice, nice price action, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll do I'll do some questions now because that, that's that's basically my thoughts on here on, on BTC. Unfortunately, no, Discord doesn't support screen sharing for more than like fifty people at a time. So we obviously got like seven hundred, nearly eight hundred people listening right now. So it's pretty pointless to try and do screen sharing because only 50 people will be able to watch and then people will not like that <laughs> um so let's see what we have going on then right i'm gonna have to go after all the sound is not okay comments um uh so the soy soy says hope all is well how did you get 33 500 support it was the point of control at the time i think it was just a massive high volume node um so yeah it was big volume level mate um i'm posting the screenshots in jet trading guides which is the channel just above trading help uh somebody the next question is Hi guys, Exocharts question. Would you use the Bitcoin pair you actually trade on Binance Futures or would you always use Bybit? A hundred percent, my answer is use Bybit. Even if you trade on Binance, which I think is a mistake. <laughs> but even if you really want to trade on Binance, never use Binance on, on Exocharts because Binance order flow is awful. Um, you, you, you only really can use BitMEX but then I think, why would you use BitMEX when you have Bybit? I, I don't know, bit of a weird choice. But BitMEX order flow is good and Bybit order flow is good. Um, so those are the only two I would ever look at. But yeah, it just makes a lot more sense to do Bybit because it has more volume, more open interest. 
so naturally buy bit is better of the two but yeah never ever 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 even if i was trading on binance would i use binance on order flow because it sucks <laughs> And I know like FTX sucks as well because they have like a delays in their data. Like, the, you know, I would just say always look at Bybit, yeah. Um. Uh, somebody says we have a naked point of control at 30, let me tell you. Yes, we do have a naked point of control at 33,900 on the daily. And we also have another one at 35,375. Uh, the other alt altcoin that I haven't been talking about recently, but I am trading is Link. Uh, Link and Dot, they're both pretty decent at the moment to be trading. Maybe a bit too late for Link. I've actually been in this one a little while, but but Dot is another one that I'm trading. Uh, it's trying to reclaim the weekly. If it can reclaim the weekly, then it looks really, really, really good. I am already long on it though, but it needs to reclaim the weekly. I will show you a print screen now. But you obviously got the weekly to 5,000 sats. If it can reclaim them, even better. Obviously, I'm trading this on... Um, uh, dot usdt on my bit but i look at this pattern. so yeah just a, a note but you really would want to see maybe that 0 0.005 reclaimed at least the weekly because that's resistance pretty big at the moment but i am already long on dot but yeah link is another one that i'm pretty bullish on this solano coin looks pretty decent but i'm not trading it at the moment but i might start trading sol because that's pretty volatile on Bybit at the moment. So, I'm not in it yet, though. So, um, right. What else do we have? Next question is, is there a reason you pulled a fixed range for the last week and the upwards channel does not, does it not matter that there are not higher highs at the moment, they're just lower highs? Well, I suppose like in the way that you view that channel, I think that's a good question. Obviously, this channel is a local, is a local upward sloping channel because you have made a high, a lower high, a higher high, and now you could be making that higher low. So you are in and locally on like the one to, you know with a one hour chart we are in an uptrend from the 22nd of june 25th of june 26th of june 29th of june now we're putting in our potential lower higher low sorry and we obviously need to breach 36 500 for that higher high but we are in a local uptrend uh, when you look back to the 22nd of june Thirty-four point seven k. I I I would never. So the guy, there's a question saying, "What would you like to see to see we have reclaimed uh, thirty-four point seven k weekly?" I personally would not long up here, whether we reclaim a level or not. I just would never long up here. Um, <clears throat> this is this is this is just not a level I would long. Even if you reclaim this for. I don't know. This is just not in my thought process right now to think of longing where I are, where we are. Like, I, I, I think trading like literally comes down to. I'll, I'll send a print screen. Trading guides. So the print screen I've just posted of what I'm talking about here. I think trading comes down to a lot of the time, like having cojones <laughs> you know having a bit of confidence having a bit of balls having that self-belief that your levels are going to work because it just puts you in such an advantageous position and i think like it's just not in my thought process right now to to look like i'm just not longing here and i haven't just honestly just don't have an interest in longing here but that's because i have my long lower from yesterday 
And so I think trading is like one of these things where it comes down to have that confidence when the setup's there. Take it. Yeah, take it. And then, like here, I don't know. I wouldn't be looking to long, even if we reclaim, let's say there's a weekly at 34.7. I wouldn't be looking to long this. I don't know. Personally, I can just tell you today, there's no way I'm longing here. If we close above a weekly on whatever time frame, I'm not longing up here 100%. You will not see a post from me today saying I've longed. Even if we're moving, it's cause, just because I have my long from lower, you know. So, yeah, hundred percent. There's no way I'm I'm longing here, whether we reclaim a weekly or not. Um, on on Bitcoin, this is just it's just yeah, because I'm not focused on like the ultra long term at the moment. I'm I'm more focused thinking okay, our next resistance is is about thirty five four hundred. You know, this is a move of about you know, just over one and a half percent. It's not worth me longing here because the the risk to reward is just so not worth it for me. You know, the target is not that high for where the invalidation is. Uh, some people are saying, why why pull the fixed range from there? Uh, the answer is, if you pull it from the 1st of July, basically that's your, you could, you could say this is the monthly point of control because it's pulled from the 1st of July. It's also pulled from like the absolute move, uh, you know, when we first hit our, you know, after that big move to the downside, it's pulled from that first area of consolidation. Um, so, yeah, that that's why I'd say pulled from there sort of thing. <laughs> Um, let's see what else we have in here. There's a, there is a hair, there is a lot of questions. <laughs> um, uh, next one is how do you decide if a trade should be a swing trade or a scalp? And I think you have to know that before you enter the trade. Like, is there a possibility that this can turn into a swing trade? Or is that in your thought process? Like, if you're taking a long for a scalp trade, close at the target. Don't think to yourself, oh, I'll, I'll take this scalp and there's my target. And then when it hits target, oh, I'll turn it into a swing trade. I think that's the wrong mentality. If you originally took that trade thinking this has a high potential of turning into a swing trade, or well, then take profit at the first target and let it run for a swing trade. But for example, you know, let's just say you are longing here. There's no way I'd be thinking, oh yeah, I could let this run for a swing. It would have to be a scalp because this is just not a prime opportunity for a swing trade long, is it? Well, you might think so. I don't think it is. So, um, you know, when you're getting really like low entries, like really prime opportunities, then you might be more inclined to think to yourself, hey, I'll hit my take profit one and let the rest run for a swing trade. Whereas if you're trading like a mini channel, you know, I don't know, not just not like a golden opportunity, then I'd be thinking, you know, it's a scalp trade because there's no way I'd be thinking of a swing here, if that makes sense. So basically you have to decide before you take the trade, it comes down to. Uh, somebody says that he has lost a few trades recently and broke his winning streak. What is the first thing to do when he took the loss, essentially? Um, and I, I would recommend, obviously, the best thing that you can do after the losing trade is take a step back. Don't revenge trade. Don't run straight into the next trade. Just take a step back um, and just review what went wrong. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it could be that nothing actually went wrong. It's just one of those things that you cannot win every single trade. So sometimes you might review the trade and be like, hey, I had my analysis on point. I actually done nothing wrong and I couldn't have done anything better, which is just sometimes the case. But as I'm sure for the majority of people listening, because you are learning, most likely you have made a mistake. So what you'd have to do is, you know, use trading help, for example, to ask what went wrong or try... Better, obviously, if you can do it on your own, 
uh, work out what went wrong. You know, did you move your stop loss up too quickly? Did you not take profit correctly? Was your position sizing incorrect? And that, you know, has forced you to be emotional in the trade. So I think a lot of it comes down to emotions. Um, but yeah, the, I think the first thing that you would do is want to work, try and work out, you know, what went wrong. Was it emotionally driven mistake or was it a technical driven mistake? Like, for example, were you trying to do, uh, were you trading off an incorrect level? Like, did you mark your level out wrong? For example, uh, somebody says, am I going to do a video about portfolio diversification? And the answer is yes, I will. Uh, how do you decide between monthly, weekly, daily levels when they're close together? Generally speaking, the higher term time frame level. So if I have a monthly and a daily right next to each other, generally, I would choose the monthly. Do you think the Igor session is in two weeks time? Um, somebody says, will I ever preset orders on a naked point of control? The answer is no, I will never do that. I will have an alert, but I would never preset an order. Um, oh, I forgot we can do voice chat in here. I might. Uh, I don't know how long I want to do this for. Um, how long? I don't know how long we've been speaking at the moment. Twenty-three minutes. I know George managed to, manages to do these for an hour, but yeah, I'm not going to do this for an hour <laughs> because I don't want to die. Um, I don't know. I don't know how long he's going to keep it up for an hour, but <laughs> I'm impressed that he goes on for so long. Um, uh, somebody says, I've noticed that you predominantly look and give more attention to volume levels and less respect to Fibonacci daily levels. Is there a reason for that or am I noticing it wrong? I would say you're noticing it wrong, maybe. I wouldn't say that I'm using volume more than I used to. Um, it's just like when I am, for example, presenting a chart, I will delete, or not delete, but hide all the other analysis and just leave one level on the chart um, just because it makes things clean, makes things easy to explain, I suppose. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say I'm using volume more than normal. I think I'm using it the same as I always have. <laughs> I, I don't know. I wouldn't say I'm, yeah, I wouldn't say I'm using it more than normal. I would just say, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. I, to answer the question, yeah, but no, I wouldn't say I'm using volume more than I ever have before. I would just say, um, it might look like that potentially because I'm like hiding other levels on the chart when I'm saying, oh, it bounced off the point of control, for example, and I've hid other analysis um i suppose would be the answer but yeah no i wouldn't say i'm using volume more than i ever have and less fibs like yeah no i wouldn't say i'm using it more uh outsider hey daniel would you class the previous day as double distribution let me check i think the answer is no but let me check so yesterday no i would not class that as a double distribution because yeah there were no single prints at all um it was a double distribution to start with that day. Yeah, because you'd done your first distribution. You had the move up England time, 5 a.m. You formed a second distribution. And that was, at the time, a double distribution day. It looked like a double distribution day. But then we obviously got the acceptance into the single prints. And if you want to follow along with this, this was on capital letter S. So capital letter row S. We got acceptance into the single prints. And we come straight down to the top of the initial balance. I'll put this in the print screens. So yeah, I would not... This was a double distribution day to begin with. And I know this one pretty well because I was I was literally trading this one yesterday. And we done the swing failure. That well, wasn't a swing failure, but we obviously done the selling tail of the high into the CC, which was a pretty easy short position. And... My first take profit was the top of the initial balance slash filling the single print. So, yeah, it was a double distribution day to start with, but it ended. I would not class that one as one now, no. Uh, 
uh, somebody says, what's the most technical tool when it comes to Bitcoin? I don't think I want to say like most technical, like this is better than everything else because then everyone's just going to use that tool. <laughs> no. If I say, oh, this is better than everything else, everyone's just going to be, oh, right, that's it. Ditch everything else and just use that. So I, I wouldn't say that there is a most technical tool. I think it all just comes together. And um, like, honestly, I can be... I think it, I think you all kind of know this by now as well, that I just kind of have a, like a feel for it. Like, I don't know, like it just kind of is so, I just have like a really good feeling now of what's going to be happening. And then it happens. Like, I don't know. It's a little bit hard to, well, it's not hard to explain. It literally just comes down to having done this for so long now. I just have a really, really, really good feeling of, right, I'm going to take that trade and it ends up working and I'm not going to take that trade and the trade that I didn't take like would have failed anyway so I think like literally one of the best technical tools is intuition and experience because it's such a guiding factor of just thinking like yesterday like I gave that 33 500 level in the trading updates as intraday support and that was posted what like three hours in advance and then we hit the level that I gave you to the dollar it's the absolute low of the move and we get a massive bounce so it's like it's just like that like you you, you couldn't make that up like you couldn't you literally just couldn't make that up like i've given the level and it's worked perfectly but it's just like one of these feelings that i have it's like i just have a really 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 good feeling of the market of this is a good trade and you ask 10 people in the group maybe even is this a good trade and Everybody says yes. And it's like, yeah, I haven't taken it. I don't know. It's It really, really, really does come down to this just like level of intuition, I think, of, of just like seeing it happen time and time and time and time and time again. And just like recognizing, hey, this is a really good trade now, or this is a really bad trade now. Um, so yeah, that that's why trading takes a lot of time, don't know. That's, that's why trading is more not just about theory. And it does require practice because, yeah, you can learn all of the modules. But if you haven't actually traded at all, there's a big difference between theory and practical. And that's how you can be a really good analysis, um, analysis, <laughs> but you can be a rubbish trader, um, you know, and it all comes. It's like yesterday. Um, I, I gave 33,500, but how many people took it? You know, I, I reckon not many people took it, even though I've given the level. I've even written in the champions group, we've had a swing failure pattern. This is a, this is a nice long opportunity. Uh, how many people woke up today probably, you know, annoyed that they've missed the trade? I think quite a lot of people. Uh, I don't know. I don't have statistics on this. But I would imagine a fair few people in the group woke up this morning thinking, damn, why didn't, why didn't I take that trade? Well, the only reason you didn't take the trade is because emotions, no? Because it's a technical level. It's a technically a good lot. So the only excuse possible is emotions. You thought it was going to go down lower. You thought this time that trade wasn't going to work out, for example. You know, so, so you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's so based off of, like, trading is, uh, so you need that experience. You need that, um, you know, time actually trading. But obviously, you know, that's not to say like the, the levels that I'm giving, they are technically driven. So obviously that's all derived from technical analysis. And then it's it's the case of, yeah, we've done the technicals, but now you actually have to have the uh, confidence to take the trade because <laughs> it's all well and good giving a level. But if you're not going to actually take the trade, then it's, you, you know, what's it worth? It's worth nothing. So, um, yeah. But obviously, I'm getting a lot of these levels at the moment from, you know, a mixture of Fibonacci volume, um, you know, they're, they're the same tools that I've always used. And obviously, they're extremely accurate. So, yeah, I wouldn't say that there's a number one, um, to be honest with you. Uh, next question is, I live in the UK. and was under the impression Bybit could not be used. Is that wrong? Well, yes, I would say that is wrong. Um, I live in the UK and I use Bybit every day. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Dan, the XO range from the 20th merge seems to... Oh, boy. 
I suppose you mean the 20th of May. Um, as the value and the value area high. Almost double. Not sure. If you want about the 20th of May, the value area high is 38k. And the point of control has changed now to basically where we are right now. And I still, if you're on about the 20th of May, you've just said the 20th with no idea. I'm not sure if you're on about the 20th of June or 20th of May. But um, yes, I would still be merging that range. Yes, definitely. Somebody says, how do you feel about a triangle playing out? I don't know. I'm not, I'm honestly not trading for a triangle right now. So I, I don't really have a feeling either way about it, if I'm honest. Um, hello, Daniel, as you said before. How is Prime XBT for trading? Um, I would say, why why on earth would you want to use Prime XBT? <laughs> uh, hi, Daniel. Hope all is well. Are you still looking at the smaller range? Well, I think you just have the two at the moment. You, you, you have the smaller range, obviously, from about around the 18th, 19th of June. And then you have the bigger range, obviously, from the 19th of May. So you have two places to pull the range from. The bigger range from the 19th of May, the smaller range from the 19th of June. Um, uh, I suppose I could try and upload this, yes. I'm going to do two more questions and then I'm personally going to wrap it up. Uh, I'll do the two questions on voice, why not? So the two in the list are, I don't know if you, can you all see the list? The next two in the list are somebody called Alex and Astro Bird. Um, so I'll see if they want to join. Yo. Hello. Hello, mate. All right. Yeah, good, mate. How are you doing? Well, okay, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Mate. I just finished the uh, uh, finished the modules. I don't know, like a week or so ago. That's a good game. Uh, well, it's taken a couple of months to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just sitting here typing up all my pages and pages of notes to try and sort of condense it to something a bit smaller um before i start through everything again really yeah no that, so what have you done like your first watch through of them and then you're gonna go through another another time yeah go through them another time i'm i might sort of um try and speed it up and maybe skip some of the coin of the weeks maybe things like that just to try and uh, i don't know just sort of speed things up a bit really because it's mm. um I guess, I guess I've joined three or four months ago. Oh, yeah, uh, fair enough. And I've been uh, trading whilst I'm sort of learning as well, um, making lots of mistakes. As you, uh, no, that's good. I'm enjoying it so far. That's good. Man. You have to remember every mistake is a learning opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm juggling with it, uh, you know, kids and new dog and job. Uh, so yeah, just trying to sort of shoehorn it into my life. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. It's good. Just listening to you whilst I'm typing, really. I, did you? Uh, did you? Do you have any any questions? Um, not particularly at the minute, no. Because um, as I say, I'm just I'm just so uh, diluted watching. I've not really been trading the last couple of days, just partly because of the euros. <laughs> um, <laughs> stuff going on at home um so i've just sort of taken a few days off really been spending as much time on the charts but i've been trying to as i say type up all my notes and, and get uh, a little bit of order to to you know my brain really i guess all right fair, uh, fair enough uh, no, no no specific questions at the minute but um yeah i'm happy to, happy to be part of the group
hoping to um, move up into champions at some point, but uh, just want to sort of um, solidify stuff really a little bit first before I um, upgrade. That oh, that makes, makes sense. sense. <laughs> you know, that, that that's the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good to be a part of it. Oh, more than I don't think I'm actually... I don't think I'm too far away from you. Well, probably an hour or so, I think. Um, the next chart champions meet up then. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you do those then? Oh, yeah, well, we haven't. The last one we done was in London, but um, yeah. Well, hopefully now things are opening back up again. We'll be able to do one soon. Yeah, yeah. No, that'd be good. Yeah. Love to join up. Yeah, man. Team for that. Yeah, no questions, no specific questions out there, I'm afraid. Oh, no worries. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll invite in Astro Bird to speak and see if he has a question then. Yeah, see if she's more useful. <laughs> <laughs> nice to talk to you, Daniel. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. 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 I've, in I've invited the... Next one. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi, mate. How are you doing? Hi, Daniel. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Danny. Um, oh, shit. I'm, uh, I'm through. Okay. Um, you know, my question is a little bit uh, maybe a psychological one. Mm. Uh, because, um, you know, I, I, I've been, I've been uh, I'm going through the learning modules. Uh, I'm not quite finished yet, but I'm uh, almost finished. Um, uh, I'm trying to do all the uh, note taking and everything that uh, I'm supposed to. So my question is: right now, I'm I'm, I'm also trying to trade a little uh, in the meanwhile. But uh, you know, with the one dollar, one dollar at the time, I get to test the the theories. Mm -hmm. uh, but every time I'm um, I kind of I have some levels and I, I look for the Fibonacci. I look for all these uh, confluences and everything, and and it seems to me that every time either my levels uh, are not respected and then it goes through, uh, or it is uh, respected but then it, my stop loss is taken. Um, I understand, of course, it it, it all come, comes with uh, an experience. Uh, Psychologically, I'm kind of a, on a low level right now because I think, okay, everything I'm trying, it, it turns to it turns to shit, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. So, so how do you deal with with, with the psychological losses? Uh, even though there's no money on the line, it's like, oh, come on, another loss. I know what you. I, I think. I think a lot of people uh, are probably go through the set. I'm pretty sure like lots of people are probably in like the same position where they're, uh, you know, they go on like really, really big losing streaks, for example. And obviously it's pretty gutting. Um, but but I, I would say, well, obviously, how much of the modules have you watched? I, I suppose you've, have you watched quite a fair few? Yeah, uh, I'm, a, you know, uh, I'm a, at the strategies uh, now. Uh, so... I'm watching oh, that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what what I would say is is, is first thing. Uh, well, how how long have you been trading in total? You know, I started trading uh, maybe. Uh, I I think I started trading uh, in January, and and uh, I lost a lot of money. I've invested in in Bitcoin, and then I lost a lot of it uh, <laughs> in January. And then I'm like, okay, I'm trying to learn and back off from uh, this uh, big money and everything. That's why I'm trading with one dollar. Yeah, no, that that's obviously the best thing to do. Keep it like, I I I think like, there's like two parts that you can view it. For firstly, I think is, um, just remember and remind yourself that seven months, let's say, is, is still an ex like extremely extremely short period of time. Um, so that's the first thing I'd like if I was you like remind myself is you're literally right at the start of the journey. So. If you were winning all your trades, it would be more different than if you were losing all your trades. Um, you'd be more surprised if you were like ultra successful that quick. Uh, the, the second thing that I would say is it, it probably comes down to like you are obviously you're still you know in the midst of the modules. It's probably likely that you don't still have like a like an actual strategy like that you want to 
used consistently. Obviously, what you can be doing is each loss that you're taking, I imagine you might be doing this, like with each loss that you're taking, you've got to be working out like, okay, what went wrong or what could have you done better? So let's say, for example, I don't know, you've covered the Fibonacci module, so you're using the fib, Fibs. And yep. from this, you're like using, you've got a certain stop loss in place. Like you were saying that you keep getting your stop loss hit and then it maybe goes up afterwards. So I think yep. I'd like to try and work out like, okay, you know, what, what tools am I using at the moment? And let, let's say you take 10 losses in a row, go over those 10 trades. And it really helps to like take print screens. So like take print screens when you're entering the trade, take another print screen when you get stopped out of the trades and then take another print screen the next day. And then with those three print screens, you can see what went wrong and what could have you done better? Like where should have you placed the stop loss? Where should have you actually entered? Um, why one, one thing that's interesting is um, what would have happened of those 10 trades if you put your entry where your stop loss was? Um, oh, might be yeah. interesting to see like how many, how many tra trades would have you won if you had your entry where your stop loss was and then you might start to start to think about okay swing failure patterns that's generally like you know happens quite a lot people get stopped out of the trade and then it goes the other way so yeah. that I, I would start to like try and think to myself if i was you like make sure you're recording it all make sure you're taking at least three print screens of every trade and then just really simply the process of okay what should have i done and like once you've worked out what you've done wrong, you can try and work out what, what you could have done better. And then the next okay. 10 trades, maybe you lose the next 10 again, but it's obviously going to be a process. It's not going to happen 10 trades, you're a master, but do it over the next 10, then the next 10, then the next 10, then the next 10, until you hit like a thousand trades. And that might take another seven months, for example. So you come, come back in seven months or a year and, and you'll start to think to yourself, wow, how did I trade so bad before? <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so I think it's just like a process um, of definitely you have to be recording and journaling. And then fr from there, you, you obviously, the more that you watch the modules, the more that it becomes like, you, you, like with me, like I'm not really thinking about the trades that I'm taking. It's just like a natural, okay, I've pulled my fibs, I've pulled my volume, I've, I've done my analysis, and then there's the trades. So I'm not like actively thinking all the time, like, where's the next trade? It's just like, it just, you just know when you've learned it all properly because it's not an active it's not like you're putting in i wouldn't say it requires effort it's kind of effortless and once you've reached that like effortless stage i would say that that's when you've learned the modules correctly but then that's obviously going to take potentially a few years you know okay yeah oh well yeah uh i will definitely do that uh of course uh, but uh, as you, as you as you said, uh, yeah, I'm, right now maybe I don't follow a specific strategy. I'm just trying a little different things every time and think, okay, why didn't didn't this work? And and, and I know that is also wrong because you need to find a simple good strategy. Uh, so I, I'm searching for that. Uh, <laughs> what, yeah, what I would recommend then maybe is instead of like ten trades taking ten different ideas or ten different strategies, try, try just one for 10 trades i yeah. think that you, you're going to get a better date better set of results from that because i don't think it's going to be pretty hard to like form statistics if you're taking like 10 random trades within a data set so i i would make sure you stick to the same strategy for that data set um so yeah i i think that would help as well because it's going to be a lot easier to work out what's going right and wrong within the same data set than if you're taking 10 different trades it's going to be yeah i think that would add confusion okay uh, one last question yeah uh, how, how much time do you to be uh, very enthusiastic and uh, maybe not also uh, overwork yourself but not uh, being too sloppy about it either uh, how many hours a day do you think it's optimal uh, to put in uh, 12 or, or more Ooh. uh well I, I suppose it all really comes down to like personal situation like i know I mean, I will. I will always like mention him. Like Eagle, for example, he, you know, he has wife, kids, full time job, and he still manages to find like half an hour a day to fit in the charts and come up with amazing analysis. 
and then on the other end of the spectrum you'll have somebody in the group that spends 12 hours a day on the modules learning everything but they're still at the end of the day at the same stage so i, I think it comes down to really uh well planning of the day like i think the people that have maybe less time and i think this is the majority of people the majority of people have half an hour to an hour a day to you know properly sit down and and study so i think it all comes down to having you know if you know you only have hour and a half a day plan okay. out your day like say i'm going to wake up at this time and do that do that do that do that do that rather than just coming here and there and looking at the chart going away i, I think it helps to just have a diary and a plan and if you know you only have half an hour a day, then you like got to make use of that half an hour. And it's not to say you won't be as successful as the guy that has 12 hours a day, because, you know, the guy that has 12 hours will spend 12 hours looking at the charts and nothing's happening. So I, I think at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much time you have per se. It's just make sure you use your time efficiently. Whereas many people procrastinate. No, I can't even say the word, you know, many people have half, you know, two hours in the day and spend half of it you know watching random youtube videos um whereas it you know if you only have an hour a day you got to use your time efficiently stop you know stop wasting time and you know use your time well and, and i don't think there should be a thing of like oh, i have to have this many hours it's just like make use of what you got like plan out your day with a diary i think that helps um yeah that's what i'd say yeah okay Okay, well, perfect. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for your answers. No worries, mate. That's you're more than welcome. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, there, there we go then. Um, yeah, so this session has been running 50 minutes. Yeah, I am going to call it a day on this. Um, I'm Jeez. sure trading assistant has is missing out. I'm sure he wants to be here, but um, yeah, for me that's an end. Obviously, the other trading assistant, there is more than one, <laughs> is still in the chat for answering the written questions. But for me on the voice chat, I'm going to call it a day and just say, hope you've enjoyed. Thank you ever so much. And obviously, the contenders live stream is tomorrow night. So the contenders live stream is tomorrow night, not tonight where we are going obviously over TPO series part eight tomorrow night, same time Thursday. Um, so I'll see you in the stream tomorrow, everybody. Thank you ever so much and goodbye. Cheers.